This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I have a soft spot in my heart for the Microsoft Surface Pro line. And just when I thought my interest in this little tablet was over, they fixed the issues that I had with it and the infatuation starts anew. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. And today I am taking a look at the Surface Pro Eight. That means a lot to me. This channel started when I reviewed a Surface Pro 3 many, many years ago. And if you've watched this channel for a long time, you've seen me review a lot of Surface products. Surface Pro, Surface Go, Surface Book. And over the years, my love of the Surface Pro has soured because of the pen. They fixed it. They fixed the pen. That's the review. Over the years, we've seen Hui on an XP pen, and obviously the Apple Pencil came out. We've seen Android tablets with good pens, but the Surface Pen has just been the same wobbly mess of a pen, but they fixed it. Oh, that feels good to say. So let's get on with this review. First of all, I need something to draw. I'll be drawing this illustration I did for Inktober a few years back because it's very hard to do with the old Surface Pen. There are a lot of straight ink lines here, and I want to see how good is this pen? This year, the Surface Pro is getting a nice little facelift. It still maintains that form factor that I've always been a fan of. What it's done is borrowed some of the best bits from the Surface Pro X that came out two years ago. That was a beautiful machine, but it had an ARM processor and it just, nah, it wasn't for everybody. The most noticeable thing are the smaller bezels along the side. This also gives the Surface Pro 8 more room for the screen. It's bigger. It still keeps a good amount of space along the top and along the bottom, and this isn't all bad. It gives you more room for a camera that can do full HD, 1080p video calls. You also have that bottom bezel, which looks big when it's detached from the keyboard cover, but when you put the keyboard cover on, it's completely covered up. It looks good, but it can make it a little bit hard to touch some of the icons along the bottom. The screen itself looks great. It's 2,880 pixels by 1920 pixels. It's also rocking a new 120 hertz display. I went on a bit of a rant about this in my Surface Studio laptop review a few days ago. The too long didn't read is I don't think Windows has really great animations, so it doesn't really take full advantage of that 120 hertz display. Also, that display ends up pulling a fair amount on the battery and reduces how much life you're going to get out of it. Fortunately, there's a way to kind of dive into the settings and toggle it between 60 hertz and 120 hertz, so that's what I ended up doing. I needed the battery more than I needed the refresh rate. But what about drawing? Does it improve the lag? Yes. Yes, it does. I felt that reduction more here than I did on the Surface Laptop Studio. Maybe because this isn't as tuned as much for performance and so that refresh rate ends up producing the lag more. Either way, if you find the pen too laggy, kick up that refresh rate and maybe it'll help. The hinge on the Surface Pro is still one of my absolute favorite parts. It's stiff enough to stand up well at any position. There is one downside and that is since I'm using this primarily for drawing, if my hand is resting on it over time, you're gonna feel it like slide across the table or if it's at a slightly lower angle and it's not sliding across the table it will sink down over time due to the weight of your hand. The good news here is that it rests at a 25 to 30 degree angle. I personally like drawing at that angle so it works really well for what I need it to do. I just love the form factor of this thing. With a type cover on it it's still really thin, it's still really light. With most laptops I feel like I need to slide it in the bag to take it with me. This feels like holding a notebook, carrying a notebook around. Around. Also worth noting here is that the Surface Pro gets really warm. There are tiny little vents along the side for circulating the air out, but I didn't really feel much air actually blowing out. I also didn't really notice any fan noise either. That's a plus, assuming this thing doesn't overheat over time. What about battery life? I was getting, I'd say, about three and a half to four hours using the pen and using many of the drawing apps that I love. Along the side, there are two USB-C ports. Both of those are also Thunderbolt this year. Microsoft also has their own proprietary charging port. A lot of folks don't like proprietary charging ports. Personally, I don't mind because this one is magnetic, which means it sinks on and off really easily. And of course, if you trip over it, it's going to pull right out. A lot of parts of the tablet are good enough 
For example, that front-facing camera is good enough. The back-facing camera is good enough. I'm usually only using it to like snap little pictures of sketches to pull into my artwork. The speakers aren't bad. They're not great, but they're good enough. Processors and the power that you get out of it, again, not amazing, but good enough. For these reviews, I tend to pick up the lowest end configuration because one, I'm cheap, and two, everybody wants to know, is that one good enough? And here, I feel like it is. The main thing I am looking for in a laptop that I'm gonna use for drawing every single day is at least eight gigabytes of RAM, and that base configuration gives me that. Now that is $1,100, so it, this is not cheap, but you're getting a Core i5 processor, that eight gigs of RAM I mentioned before, and 128 gigabyte SSD. That 128 gigabytes is kind of low for a Windows computer. The really good news when it comes to storage is there's a little door around the back that you could open with the end of a paper clip. This will give you access to the little SSD card along the back. So if you want to down the road or right away if you find a good deal, want to upgrade the storage yourself, you absolutely can. The configurations do get up there. You can get this with 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can get this with a Core i7. You can get this with a terabyte drive. It's gonna cost you over $2,000 to do that, but you can do it. The other thing that you really have to consider when we're talking about price is the cost of a keyboard cover. The pen and the keyboard cover are sold separately and they are not cheap. The keyboard itself costs $180. Ouch. If you want the keyboard and the pen combo, that's $280. Can you use this without a keyboard? Absolutely, yes you can. Do you want to use this without a keyboard? Probably not. Personally, I rely on a lot of keyboard shortcuts. I prefer typing with the keyboard. It just makes this thing, for me personally, 10 times more useful with a keyboard than it does without. Your mileage may vary. I will say this about the keyboard cover. It is really nice. Typing on it feels really good. The trackpad, it's okay. I totally got spoiled by the trackpad on the Surface Laptop Studio last week. And there's a place in the cover where you set the pen where it can recharge. And it gives you a little light indicator to let you know it's doing its thing. Ah, I mentioned the pen. Before I get to the pen, I would like to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Having a website is great. Having your own domain makes that website even better. But what really makes Squarespace the all-in-one platform for your online presence are all the marketing tools and analytics baked in. Grow and engage your audience with Squarespace's email campaigns. Create powerful email content that matches your website with your existing products, blog posts, and logo so your message is consistent and effective. Quickly understand your audience with Squarespace's website analytics, including page views, traffic sources, time on site, most read content, audience geography, and more. Give feedback on what's working and how you can improve. Squarespace takes all the guesswork out of search engine optimization for your website, which means you'll get found in search by more people more often. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bragkolbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Is the pen perfect now? No. It is not perfect, but it is definitely good enough. If you saw my Surface Laptop Studio review last week, you've probably heard all of this before, so I apologize for repeating myself, but the performance here is pretty much identical to what I found to be happening on the Surface Laptop Studio. One thing I said in that review, and my favorite part of this pen, is that it is consistent. My biggest problem, one of my biggest problems with the old pen, there were two, one was jitter or wave to the line, and the second one was sometimes the pen was good and sometimes the pen was awful. And the thing that I found here is the pen was consistently good. One of the best parts about this is that I didn't have to troubleshoot the pen at all. A lot of people have been asking a lot of questions about, can I buy this new pen and use it on my old Surface and get these better results? The answer to that, I haven't done all of my research yet. I'm still testing and I'm probably gonna talk about this a lot more in my Surface Go 2 review in another week or two. However, what I have found early on is the answer is no. This is the pen is improved and the sensors under the screen are also improved. And it's those two things working in conjunction that make the pen better. So how is the pen better? Well, first of all, 
The pressure sensitivity is great. That really wasn't a problem before. So it continues to be good here. Same thing with palm rejection. Palm rejection was very good before. It's still very good here. I can't really tell, but I think they've improved the initial activation rate as well. That's how little you have to press in order for a line to appear. That was very good for me here. And the main thing I'm looking for is just the smoothness of lines. If I draw slow angled lines, I can still see some mechanical wobble to the pen, but when I am drawing with it, it's almost imperceptible and that is really what I'm looking for. If you really look for wave in the pen, you're going to find it, but it is greatly improved here. Before, on a lot of these devices, I would have to crank up artificial smoothing in Photoshop or Clip Studio in order to use this pen and get really clean lines, and what that does is it really puts some lag on the pen. Sometimes the line ends too soon or it ends a little bit too late. It's just really kind of hard to judge that, and it doesn't feel nearly as organic. It doesn't really feel like you're sketching. Here it did, and what this ends up doing is it ends up taking drawing, which was kind of a chore on older surfaces, and makes it fun. Now, when we're talking about like drawing and workflow, one of the flaws that the Surface Pro has always had is that if you want to use it comfortably, you have to take off that keyboard cover and hold it like a tablet, or maybe you fold it underneath and set it down at that low angle to draw with. But when you do either of those things, you lose all of those shortcut keys. Now, nowadays, there are several apps out there for Windows that work really, really well with touch alone. Sketchable, Fresco, which is an Adobe app, Leonardo. I like drawing in Photoshop. I like drawing in Clip Studio. Both of those apps are really, really reliant on things like the, the shortcut keys. Microsoft has talked a lot about their haptic feedback that they've put into this pen and it's growing on me. It doesn't work in most apps. Sketchable is one where it does. If you press lightly, you don't get any feedback, but as you apply more pressure, you get more feedback. When done in moderation, it's a cool effect. When it's not done in moderation, not so much. So if you open up Microsoft Whiteboard and you don't like how it feels before you completely toggle it off, my suggestion would be to go into the settings and try just turning down the intensity a little bit and try it again. All right, let's 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 get to the pros and the cons. The pros is that they fix the pen. Have I mentioned that they fix the pen? I, I do really like the Surface hardware. I really love the hinge. I really love picking this thing up and carrying it around. I think that the way that the keyboard attaches, it, it's a cool computer. It is a cool laptop. The cons are those keyboard shortcuts that I mentioned before. If you're gonna be drawing a lot, you're probably really going to miss those. I think that's the biggest thing for me. I also think the price the price is kind of high for this thing. I would say this, if you're looking at an iPad versus a Surface, one of the real pros of the Surface is it's a do everything sort of machine. Not to knock the iPad or anything, I love the iPad, but this runs everything, it does everything. It is a full-fledged computer that you can draw on and has the same form factor is an iPad. And if that's what you're looking for, the Surface Pro is one of the best things out there. I think for me, I've just come off using the Surface Laptop Studio, and what I discovered is I think that is the perfect form factor for me. It includes a keyboard, which is an extra cost on the Surface Pro. Also, it's that higher end configuration. So when you actually look at the prices of those two things and you're looking at an apples to apples comparison, it really it really evens that price up quite a bit. But if you like all the benefits of having that full Windows computer but still need more portability than what the Studio would offer you, here you go, the Surface Pro is where it's at. It is that perfect point of portability meets practicality of having a full operating system. And with the changes and the updates to the pen, I think it's ready. And I have no problem at all this year recommending it to you. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.